look at the history of Shawnee on that show, on those shows, even the way that she played Tammy. And I'm not saying Tammy's always been right, mm -hmm. but she played Tammy. She's she's the uh, puppet master. She mm -hmm. knows all that. She she knew Evelyn had slept with uh, Tammy's husband, and then she just builds the momentum so t so e Evelyn could come out on the show and tell Tammy who's still holding on her from that divorce. Oh, by the way, Tammy, I slept with your husband back in the day. I guess y'all were still married. You trying to tell me Shawnee didn't know that? And then what happened? They get in a fight. Shawnee is, Shawnee's not innocent in all this. And I, 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 but I don't think that, yeah, I don't think Brandy should have disrespected her, mm -hmm. but and, and also, by the way, Shania isn't really truly the boss, but yes, she does have a say so in it because she right. she's the creator of the show. But well, I I, take I, I, mm -hmm. I think Shani, um, as the executive producer, she, I think she kind of should take the Carlos King kind of role and not mm -hmm. be on the show, like yeah, don't, like, do special appearances or whatever, unless it's a resolution, a conflict resolution. Like yes see that i remember real housewives of atlanta they used to have the therapist come in and you know remember how they mm -hmm. had the yeah yeah right? yeah 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 she just a good trip um, yeah um but at least they were trying because yeah like, i don't want them to get to go from a zero to a hundred because by the time yeah they it's so oh it makes me cringe and then it's like nobody's there because I like if I get in a fight, I don't like when people break me up out of a fight. If I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? If I'm yeah, know, my own and that person's handling their own. But I'm not saying physical. I'm just saying like when we're going speaking to each other, fight. But yeah, if when it gets nasty and it gets hurtful and they want to pick up something, why is it someone's in the group like saying, "Hey, like come on now, this is not right." I even thought Jackie would be that type of person, but Jackie has some. Uh, Jackie some messy. She have to work on too. She yeah, from, yeah. She go from zero to one thousand. So yeah, yeah, you know yeah. True. Like if Chani's gonna be the uh, the friends because she's brought them, they were all they are friends. Are they came in there? Shawnee has some kind of personal relationship with them. I like how um, Shawnee is like when she's talking to the ladies, but we don't we didn't see her on this last season until the you know why no because miss girl is a first lady and shawnee is not stupid she knows that that to the congregation here in texas with keon mm -hmm. who is a up-and-coming pastor he followed tdj he was under tdj's tutelage she knows that would not sit well. Shawnee play Shawnee Shawnee smarter than, than the average bear. Oh, she yeah. knows Very she Very she cool. knows that this is not this would not look good for a first lady. She knows, you know, she she's a part of a mega church. Right. And she's newly married, and this is a this is a smart, this was a smart thing for her to do. Mm -hmm. And some some of these women that get on reality TV, they I think sometimes they don't think it through like what if this falls through? What if this ends? Mm -hmm. What will happen in the future? Because this is your brand that you are like gift selling to the world. So how how is this going to carry me on if it doesn't work? What if another season? Mm -hmm. Shiny is very strategic. Even if you, and this is alleged, but I remember back when um, she was divorcing Shaq and it was in the papers. I'm going to say allegedly, but I sure did read it. And, <laughs> yep. Yeah, and Shawnee, it said in the papers, like they were going through the divorce and it said that Shaq had to hire a forensic accountant because it said that girl, Shawnee had to took some of the money and had put it in her mom's name and other accounts. I said, that girl is smart. <laughs> she knew that he, she knew he couldn't be trusted. Mm -hmm. Maybe she felt like it wasn't gonna last. And Shawnee was not gonna leave that marriage mm -hmm. with like nothing, even though she would have never. But Shawnee, she was smart the way she like built her empire. Yeah. But but smart doesn't also mean that um, she will give the next woman you know respect. And I I don't 
I think she's been very sneaky with the way that she produces shows by being a part of the cast. Yeah, because so. I mean, every with everything like you know, because it's a business. Everything is strategic. Everything has you know a way about it. You know what I'm saying? And but the way that when she first started the show, because um, I'm a fan of the show. I mean, I like watching it. You know, whether people you know like it or not but i like it and i have my special people that i like but when shawnee first started off she she was more i won't say she she wasn't even on it all the time either. she wasn't on it she was yeah, she, but, they you know, started in miami first, first started yeah in miami when she, she first started, yeah when she was leaving and creating her new world her new life you know what i mean I remember that because I recently. Well, she was already the, she was already divorced. She yeah, was just know, she, she was just bringing them together. Life. Yeah, she was just bringing them together, mm-hmm. she's starting a new life. You know, she's moving on from that chapter, however long it took her. You know, but she started the show and she wasn't real. She wasn't on it all the time, but the girls pretty much was doing their thing. But she was in the background. But like Malaysia said, from that point on to this point, where this last season Malaysia wasn't on it but whenever she got off of it she was just saying that um, Shawnee was always there for her when she called her she was always there she might have been on the scene or maybe on the scene could have been in the restaurant but she probably was in the you know trailer or something or the van why why do you think she wasn't on this season because of like you said her marriage her image oh okay no I just wanted to know it it was an image from day one yeah. yeah, but but in particular, it, even though I know you you haven't seen maybe a lot about the marriage and stuff, but in oh, particular, yeah. it is because it. she's a first it. she's a first lady, and I'm not saying I even blame her for it, but I'm mm-hmm. like, don't you know? Like some people are like, why is Shawnee not on this season? And I'm like, hello, people, duh, she's a first lady. Like sometimes. I mean, not that I'm saying I know everything, but like sometimes things are not like that hard to figure out. It's like right. she's a first and lady. The way her husband is, he's not gonna have her on there too because he's exactly he's, not in neat girl, he's not in neat Texas nigga. Yeah, and not in neat like these these Texans, these Texans and religion. They, and if you notice now in the last couple of years, these black religious leaders that are part of these mega churches. They have come into the social media world and their congregation heavily judged them on their media personality, on their personality out there. So Shani ain't messing up that. Girl, keep your man. Do what you need to do as a first lady. But she ain't gonna let but Shani ain't gonna let go of that money. She she's still right. business minded. So right. right. So she may not, Did, may not mm-hmm. see her much on the show, but she has her hands in the pro- pro- profession of it in the craft put it that way because like malaysia said that the reason why brandy um and her probably fell apart is because at the last time they were on the show together she just said brandy kept coming at her and she was like we're dude we're friends like you won't do your friend like this you know what i'm saying so it was more of an opportunity Mm -hmm. to come for malaysia and she said she as a friend she should have known that i was that this is what Malaysia was telling um, mm-hmm. that she was going through things. She was going through a lot of things in her real life, and as a friend, you don't do your friend like that. You know what I'm saying? And then when yeah, you, because you know how those girls, you'd be like, one day, yeah, yeah, them, yeah. One day they all get mm-hmm. in the next thing, kind of like how Sheree is when she gets with the girls on Real Housewives. One minute she's like sitting around them, and then she goes over to the other side and she'll tell them exactly what they were saying over there. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't. I mm-hmm. never got that. I know you want to be mm-hmm. real and you want to be straight up, but if you're my friend, you ain't gonna go sit over there and tell my other the other girls. You know what I'm saying? What I just you, said. Oh, what mm-hmm. said. You know what? I I they had her I, I, in a fight mm-hmm. with, with Malaysia, and Malaysia's like, "Why is this girl all in my face like this? Why why are you feeling some type of way about me? And I haven't even really talked to you. You haven't even called me up when my you know and all this and all that. So. I can see they played each other like they might not admit it. You know, Carlos ain't gonna admit stuff, you know, either. Because then we we'll, we already kind of know what they do in the background. But well, Carlos know, isn't a part of of uh, basketball wise, huh? 
he Carlos doesn't do anything with basketball. Wise. I know, no. What I'm saying, as oh. an executive producer, you know they're in the background, pay, playing a part of. Oh yeah, that he's admitted that's that. That's how he. That was. That's how he started as a producer on Bravo. He was he was the main producer for Atlanta Housewives and for New Jersey. He was, you know, not an executive producer, but you know, their everyday producer that calls yeah. you up, mm -hmm. see what. Because apparently he was the one that that put together that whole story uh, about the basement with Portia and Candy and all that and Phaedra. Mm -hmm. So he he knows about like hyping the story. I just mean he's not a castmate. But I want I wanted to say that I did see a clip like long ago, a, a basketball wise with Malaysia and Brandy. I guess they had had it out. And Malaysia was kind of trying to figure out, like, what girl, what's up with you? Like, what? This isn't us. We were friends. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like Brandy did this thing that I had a, a friend that you know, mm -hmm. that you know of mine, since I was a little girl. I had to like end the friendship. Like I, I was just exhausted by it. Mm -hmm. And Brandy was like saying. Uh, to sum it up, what I got from what Brandy was saying, she never had this conversation with Malaysia. You know how people assume you know how they're feeling? Mm -hmm. she, Brandy did that and she felt like Malaysia should have took a stance for her when she was kicked off the show. Mm -hmm. And M Malaysia, so she blamed Malaysia for that. She said her dad died or something. Somebody passed away. Malaysia wasn't there for that. And it sounded like to me, she was used to Malaysia playing this position in her life. Mm -hmm. But what she didn't realize was Malaysia probably was going through something too. And she yeah. never considered that. And so, you know, Malaysia had moved to Atlanta. Um, and that, there wasn't a way for them to connect like they used to. Like Brandy was healing her marriage. Malaysia was now divorced and I think as friends you like friends you got to see like we're going to grow on different paths but if we're true friends that path should always bring us back together and for whatever reason I don't know it sounded like Brandy was just blaming Malaysia for like not being there for her but not considering that Malaysia may have been going through stuff and she it's like she couldn't let it go and I and I and I see like I like Malaysia because I I would like to be a person like that. Like if I love you, I care about you. I always want to take the time. I want to so you under so you can hear it from me, and not come up with your own assumptions. Let's talk it out. Like I want to talk it out. But Brandy reminded me of this friend that I had as a child, where she just would come up with stuff in her head and she hold on it. She hold on it for years. She'll bring up some stuff from when I was 12. Mm. Wow, that's kind of sisterish. <laughs> this uh, you know, do you know do you know the do you know the friend I'm telling you that I'm talking about? No. Think of my long think of my long term okay. friend from when I was a kid. Okay. She was my best friend. Okay. You if you think you you'll know who I'm talking my best friend always around. So yes. exhausted. Oh my God. She would say, I remember back when I remember back when we were like 25. And here we are, 37. And I'm like, what? Mm. And I didn't know she was like, she was holding on stuff. She it was such a misunderstanding. Right. And then I just got exhausted and tried to be friends again during the pandemic, you know, when everything was on quiet mode and people are trying to make up we tried mm -hmm. um and it it just, it just didn't work out then when i had got sick we tried again and then she ended up like she, she just this is not too personal but she ended up thinking that i said something like something about people having babies at a young age and i was like what She's like, I said, I said, but you had your baby at 21. That that's not really. I mean, for my generation and group, that was that wasn't really young. I was like, and why would I say that? 
Mm-hmm. And then it, it was just like a story that she created and I was so exhausted. I, I just said, hey, I, I need to focus on myself. And then she reached out to me maybe three months ago. Mm-hmm. And I, I just just plainly said like, we, we need to like go separate ways. Right. You know, friendships I, are I don't like want to be friends again. Like friendships yeah. like relationships, you know? <laughs> like how yeah. we think God, yeah. like friendships can be overwhelming. They can be yeah. Trying. And they and it could be yeah. a lot of misunderstandings. A lot. Yeah, and it's sad to I was really sad to see Malaysia and Brandy yeah. like, like lose their relationship. Together. Yeah. yeah. I like them too. Because even what yeah, even when Malaysia had, was going through her divorce, one thing I liked about her, even though she was divorcing some her husband for cheating, and on the show when Brandy found out her husband cheated, Malaysia didn't dog him out. She still said, get counseling. You know, maybe you could figure out how to make your marriage still work. You know, when some, some women would be like, he cheated, my husband cheated. You see, I'm leaving my cheating husband. You should leave your cheating. Malaysia didn't give her that advice. She get she knew like her friend wanted her marriage to work, and mm-hmm. she she still cheered that on. And I I like a woman like that. Like, right. you know, don't don't uh, you know you know me so cater your advice to your knowledge and you knowing me. I I that was I had respect for her when I saw that. Right. But yeah. it's sad. It's She's sad more, it didn't work out. Mature. Yeah, and some of the yep. ladies, even yeah, you know, some older ladies, but Malaysia's very mature. Yeah, her. she's very yeah. She has a sweet presence or a sweet personality, but she's still strong. She lets you know. You yeah, know, hey, I'm still from the hood now. I'm still from Compton. I'm still yeah. I'm from Compton, she, baby. Yeah, she, she's kind of yep. like I am. I, I give you the same energy. You give me, but I'm more people. Yeah. You see me, I'm gonna smile. When you see me, I'm happy. You see, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. don't push me to the edge because you know how we are. Yeah. Are. A lot of us. Yeah. Are but, but the thing is, like, um, I think Brandy shouldn't have used an opportunity to go against your friendship. Yeah. And that's what yeah. that's it was like enough. Um, something. Yeah. Like, she said, if she see her like at a restaurant, hey and bye, <laughs> hello, she's gonna smile. Yeah. But she said she took it too far when she saw her children and didn't speak to her children. Oh no! And you yeah, know that's that, that's petty. Have a friendship for so many years. Yeah. A friendship with the children. And yeah. She, said she didn't because of course he has kids. Malaysia has kids, so if I'm not, yeah, you're not speaking to my children. Your children are not speaking to my children, and that I have. A mm-hmm. And she said she had an opportunity to speak to my children, and she just walked away. And then when she asked her about it, she was like, "Well, I'm not going to do it because I didn't know how we were." She said, "No, no." She said at that point she knew she had to walk away. It was too overwhelming. She said she at this point in her life she's not letting anything. You know, uh, on nerves. Mm-hmm. That goes to your point about Malaysia being mature. See? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. So she said at this point, you know, um, with that friendship, I don't want a friendship. And <laughs> so she said, I don't want that friendship. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But um, I watched the last Basketball Wives recently. Um, mm-hmm. with, you know, just jumping from one episode but I saw the end and I saw the reunion and let me tell you these new girls they have on here it's like it's a dynamic of the older ladies which is really three or four and mm-hmm. newer ladies the younger ones is Evelyn still on there it's Evelyn Jennifer and mm. Jen, and Brandy hey. Brandy didn't show up to no 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 Brandy was on the show, but Brandy didn't show up to the reunion. And it's a young lady on there. She's brown skin. I forgot her name. She's been on there a couple of seasons. Uh, oh, oh, that's the girl. She was a video chick. Her daughter passed away oh, years yes, ago. Yes, yes. Okay, I, like I know her. you're talking. 
Yeah, she's really pretty too. Yeah, she is. Um, and she's you know she's been a video. She has to check Jackie a couple of times, and they were about to swing on each other. Jackie flipped that. Mm. And she was like, Jackie needs like, to sit. Jackie yeah. needs to sit down. Jeez. Um, and um, the light skinned DJ, she's not on there. I think they fought. Oh, Buffy. Sure. So it's these young kids, young girls they have on here that are dating basketball or married. I mean, they are a mess. You gotta see it, child. It's a mess. Some girls was giving them a run for their money. You know what? I had to give some of that a break because it was like, you know how when Talks I don't about. know. I don't. I don't think I'm an empath, but I I do tend to like take in like energy, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And it was like. It was just like things were like getting to me, and I was like, I need, I even YouTube. I was like, I gotta take a break. Yeah, like I don't want to listen. But did you see that Jen is uh engaged? Yeah, Jen is engaged, and um, he. I like how he checked one of the women that was talking about him in front what, of Jennifer. What did he do? Like, what did he do? One of the girls lied on him. Says mm-hmm. something. I don't know what it was because I had just realized that she was dating somebody different from the other guy that from the previous season. But she's happy. The guy treats her right. Mm-hmm. He's the opposite of what I thought she would li- uh, be dating. Um, but he was yeah, like, you know, yeah. lied on him. And so Jennifer let him know that the girl was lying on him. So at some day party, Jennifer and he were um, standing together and he, he was like, can I speak to you talking to the other young girl, That the younger girl, she was out of bounds with whatever she was lying about. And she was, he was like, let me tell you something. He said, I've been through a lot. And he was like, I would never do that. And he was like, how dare you even say that about me? You don't even know me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, let me get this straight. He's like, let me get this straight. Do not be coming from, for Jennifer. She don't deserve that, you know, something like that. He was just saying something. He checked the girl. Mm. Whatever he said, I'm just ad libbing, but he checked her. But um, uh, there's uh, somebody's doing a um a live. So the hot topic is Larry Reed right now. Saying Larry Reed, yes, Vincent Hill, Buddha. Who is that? What's going on with this? So okay, so. Do you, do you know about Larry? Do you, you know he's like a? I know who he, he is. I knew he was a okay. topic back in the days from the beef sector, because all everybody was like beefing. You know the beef sector. You know I go over there from time to time. But he doesn't come from the beef sector. No, no, he, I know, but I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. You. I'm just saying that for the audience in case they thought. Yeah. Uh, so he's from the church sector, mm-hmm. and he is. From what I understand, like I just real, I I would see stuff about him on YouTube, but for some reason I was always turned off from his videos. I don't know what it was. It was just like a weird. No, no, not the cockiness. It, I'll say his flamboyance. It just kind of turned me off because at the time when I was seeing stuff on YouTube, he was like talking about he was outing. This was like years ago, maybe four years ago. He was outing pastors that were having like extra marital relationships. And sometimes they were having sex with same sex men. And I thought it was just odd because, and I, I you know, no, this isn't a legend. You, you can find the videos. Oh, <laughs> it's, on, oh. it's on YouTube. He, oh. he, he will say it. Yeah, it's not a legend. He, it's videos. He, the videos are on YouTube. Oh, wow. And he was he was outing these uh, different pastors and all that, and I thought it was odd because I was like, I was judging mm-hmm. because I was like, he's so flamboyant, and I don't know, I was confused. Mm. So I would t- I would watch it quickly and turn it off, and then now that was like four years ago, and then recent years. He started. Uh, he started. A lot of controversy started coming about. You know, Larry Reed supposedly has a online church, um, and he has Patreon. Like, you know, he has his Patreon, and apparently, he has like a dedicated flock on YouTube, and most of them are black women. Mm-hmm. And um, he's a what do you call it? Prosper- prosperity. He does that prosperity preaching. You know what all that oh, is. Okay. Kind of like bringing that in mo- pastor who 
does that inspirational motivational it, speaking mm, mm, it's more about bringing money in like oh, uh, wow. like it, it's it's more about like you know those preachers that's like you know if you donate a thousand dollars now, that's that's that prosperity oh. preaching. That that's that Abundance that's what that is. <laughs> they call it prosperity preaching. Okay. Yes. So okay. so he does that, and then um, he slowed down on outing um, uh, people of the church because of all of the controversy. So he tried to take a different path, but he still does a little like he he still does some like spicy stories. Mm-hmm. on um the church culture um so just to speak just to speed up to late to current time like last year for the last year or so on youtube there was some controversy about him allegedly having sex with an underage church member so back when this guy was like a teenager and he lived with larry larry reed Wow. There was there was other people that supposedly allegedly came out and said that Larry Reed touched them and they were underage. There was people said they were grown. So all these accusations. There was a blogger that interviewed these people. Larry took the blogger to court, and he uh, it was settled. And basically, it looked like Larry won. But people misunderstand the story. He didn't. He didn't take the accusers to court. He took this blogger to court because the blogger could stop talking about this stuff. Mm. Cause this was hurting, this this is hurting. Larry Larry makes a lot of money. And if you see, if you see like he'll show his cars, his Bentleys, by the way, he's out of Atlanta. he shows his cars and the homes he lives in. And he sometimes he's in Miami in his home. He's got a home in Miami. He has a space in LA. He shows all of that, you know, the jewelry, blah, blah, blah. So Larry's been in a lot of controversy that the, the alleged molestation stuff. Then he got into it. Remember that preacher in New York that got robbed during, uh, yeah. So him and him and Larry got into it. So Larry stayed in controversy. Recent stuff, you you know people were coming down on TD Jakes, right? Right. Uh, recently, okay. So at so, yeah, recently people started coming down on TD Jakes, making all kind of acts because of the Diddy Association. Mm. So in my opinion, Larry used that as an opportunity to jump back into something. And you can tell that Larry has always had some kind of like, it's like this, I don't know, this issue, something with T.D. Jakes, maybe he wants to have T.D. Jakes' status. Mm. So Larry had, so Larry interviewed some guy that alleges that he was groomed by T.D. Jakes. Wow. Larry, starts, Larry starts talking about he has all these different stories about T.D. Jakes grooming, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, Pe- people are listening to this and they're like, Larry, who are you to talk about T.D. Jakes when, you know, when all this stuff you have out, okay? Right. right. So now, so that was like, that was like last month. So let me just bring you up to what hit us in the YouTube world. I think it was on Monday or Tuesday. So Larry travels around with a crew of men. They help with his YouTube channel, this, this, that. He had this one guy that was with him for many years that was like a assistant, producer, contributor, yada, yada, yada. His nickname is Buddha. His real name is like B something Tyrell. He's on YouTube now. He has a channel, Mm -hmm. a very interesting channel too, it seems like. Um, And he had worked with Larry for like, I don't know, 13 or 15 years, but left, left the Larry Reed camp in 18 and he was helping produce shows he said he came up with the idea of larry reed live and the conferences and stuff that larry would have so he comes he said that god put something on his heart because he does all this stuff about like church hurt abuse like kind of just like psychological stuff that could happen to you in spirituality in religion you know these leaders he said when the story came out, he said God had put it on his heart. 
but then he was holding back. He said, then he saw the story with Diddy. Then he saw the story with someone else. And so it was all these stories about these sexual deviants and how a person of power can control or groom, blah, blah, blah. And he remembers last year the story with this, 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 this he's a grown man now. Levantre came out and gave the story to Tasha Kay about how Larry Reed allegedly molested him for years. Mm. And they had, Tasha Kay had the guy, the, the guy on there that was alleged molested. He had the guy's mom on there and his brother. And they all talked about this culture. It sounded very cult-like uh, being under Larry Reed. And so this guy, Buddha, I'm using his nickname because I can't say his, his other name is too long. So mm -hmm. Buddha, he said, he comes out with this video. I think it was on Wednesday or Tuesday of this week. And I'm sure it has a million views or cl getting close to it right now. And he comes out and here's what, here's what I think J Jaguar Wright should do too when she says stuff, but I won't say too much about her. Here's, this man is super smart and Larry better watch himself. Cause this guy is more intelligent. He's more intelligent. He's more calculated. He's strategic. Um, he speaks better than Larry will, Larry. He has receipts. You hear that, Bronze? Mm -hmm. This man has receipts. Okay? Yeah. So this man, this man drops a bomb on us, Bronze, and says he introduces himself. Some of the audience know, know already knows about him because they're part of the church sector. Mm -hmm. He said, I worked for Larry Reed for X amount of years. He said, during that time, I was his assistant. I traveled with him domestically, internationally. I also lived in the same household as Larry Reed. And for 13 of those years, I had a sexual relationship with Larry Reed. That's where the ball well, is. This guy, uh, was he a, uh, underage or? He was not underage, but what he, well, what, but what you have, what you have, what you have what is, if he's not under age, why is he feeling it like he has to expose that? I mean, because like, because because he's exposing it because one number one, if you watch Larry Reed, he claims that he's had all this. Well, it's not claimed. He said he's had abuse. He has a documentary where he talks about he was like abused by like six or seven cousins when he was a kid, mm -hmm. male cousins having doing stuff to him. Oh, wow. But Larry Reed, in recent times, Larry Reed says, I'm not a gay man. I like women. All this, all these years and stuff, Larry has been like, like saying like he's been um, celibate. He's not having sex with a man, this, this and that. So the guy is saying that when he, he started with Larry at 21, he's coming from a place of saying, he was, he was, Larry was in a power of position and Larry in a way groomed him. Now grooming can happen when you are of age. The only thing is that it's not, it, he didn't do anything illegal, but you can be groomed as a, as an adult. And what he's also adding to the story, he said he never knew the, the young guy that said Larry allegedly molested him. He said he never knew about that story and he was like Larry's like press person. He was Larry's fixer. And he said that Larry kept that story away from him. He didn't know why. When he left the camp and somebody reached out to him and said, can you talk to this, to Levantre? He thinks that you helped Larry to cover this up. When he has this discussion with this kid, he realized that some of these stories that this kid is saying, one, for example, uh, and, and, a, and a lot of alleged accusers that were underage say this same story. By the way, Bronze, two other people came out this week that were underage. Well, one was underage and one was another man. Mm -hmm. And they, they have the same ex sexual experiences. So one of them, and this is, this is clean, one of them is like Larry has this thing about like buying, uh, uh, allegedly buying underwear for the men so and wanting to see their prints. 
that's what I don't understand. Like, why would you call yourself a pastor, a preacher, or a motivational speaker, inspirational speaker? But you, you're, you know, you have these tendencies, and you know they're not right. And then you come. Mm-hmm. It's like a wolf in sheep clothing, to me. I, I don't know if if it's enough time to even take all this in. If you listen, if if you, it's so much out there that it would take you a year. But when you hear about the the culture that Larry Reed created when he was in South Carolina and moved to Atlanta. You hear about, uh, here's one other thing you hear about. There's a lot of people, and all of this is alleged, but this is what my ears heard. But let me say it's alleged because I wasn't there. But there's a lot of people that have uh, issues with their sexual orientation. So it sounds like they're hiding to be gay. And then Larry will have like a woman that's like a stud or she's gay. She will marry a man who... If you're just using stereotypes, the man is gay. So, like, he had his cousin marry his best friend, whose name is Shimako. This this guy that's telling all the tea about Larry, he also says, like, Larry has had a long-term relationship with Shimako. He also shows pictures, bronze, of all the men that Larry is having. Said. All he's doing is debunking lies because... I feel it's important, not for people like you and I, Mm -hmm. but there are so many black women, Christian black women that are following him and taking him in as a leader. And they are donating big time money. This money is like a tax write off. And I just, I, I just think like people, I don't know if it's true. We weren't there, but the guy it's too, it, it's, it just can't be a lie. Another guy just came out and he was being interviewed on King Payne's uh, channel. And he was a sort of straight acting guy. Mm-hmm. And he comes out and talks about how, how Larry allegedly was taking care of him. Larry brought him in the house as a chef. And he, ha- he, he was having sex with Larry. And he became a bottom for Larry. Then this other younger what? guy. What did you say? Huh? You said a bottom. A a bottom. bottom. A girl. He was taking Larry. Yeah, he was taking, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And at the same time, Larry's ex wife, she lives in the house with him currently. She's been, you know, he moved her back in. But I think that's just, to me, that seems to be like, they don't and have any kind of. You, to, to the viewers, you may not have the same like when you're listening to because we we have like this channel is open to anybody and they may get offended because we're talking about what is going on in you know in the entertainment world or youtube world and we're not talking like we're not going against gay men gay women you know and stuff like that but you guys know what the truth is we don't have to explain that to you we just don't choose to do it i mean i don't choose to do it i don't have i i don't have anything again i just feel like when it comes to religion just tell the truth there's obvious there's gay churches out there you know larry has become so popular and at the way the world is now if he just came out and said look I am I am gay. I'm dealing with yeah. my sexuality. There are a group of tell the truth. Yeah. You don't have to dress there, like a woman. You don't have to down a woman. You don't have to down black women. You know what I'm saying? Tell the truth. Stop lying to people. Just like the men. I talk about the men too. Black men. Stop lying to these your women, your girlfriend, your wife. If you want to be with someone else, tell the wife and move on. Don't cheat on her and don't pretend. If you have a girlfriend and you have a wife, don't lie to your girlfriend and tell her you're not married. You know what I'm saying? You're putting the other person in a very strange position that they will be judged by the most hot for that. So that's what we're saying. Stop lying to I think. I think what has made people upset recently with the Larry Larry Reed thing is because T.D. Jakes is a beloved, and this is not me speaking, T.D. Jakes is a beloved person in our culture. He is a beloved person in the Christian, Southern, the Texas, mega church, you know, arena. And so, listening to him. 
And so Larry has been going hard for the last 30 days against T.D. Jakes. I think this guy, I'm telling you, this guy, if you listen, just if you get a chance, just listen to his interview because he very much understands Larry. It's like Larry, he was going so hard against T.D. Jakes. And and you know, when it's just like this stuff with Fanny, with Trump, she's doing her job, right? Mm-hmm. It's her job to go after Trump. So naturally, what do you think Trump supporters are going to do, Braun? They oh, dig in. Yes! So it's like, Larry, you are going against T.D. Jakes. Do you really think people aren't like looking and digging and in your backyard? And so now, now you're going against T.D. Jakes trying to say that T.D. Jakes is... Larry came out and he was saying stuff like T.D. Jakes is gay. Yeah, and some and of then he, Jakes, uh, his followers are rich too and wealthy, so they'll yeah have resources to come for him. Larry said he's doing he. This was like this was just like a couple. Larry was like, I'm doing a documentary on TDJ. I know y'all don't want to believe it. So my thing that I would ask Larry is, why do you expect us to believe you about TDJ? But we are not to believe what these people are saying about you. And this is just the last thing I'll say, unless you have other questions after I say this. That guy played, that guy, this is why I believe that guy. And that guy is throwing hints to Larry and his team. And his team is somebody also that uh, can speak very well, organize things. I won't say his name, because he might be listening. He's a support. He's a, a YouTuber, and whenever Larry gets in trouble, he comes in and plays Captain Save And Ooh, do I know the YouTuber? Yeah, I've mentioned his name to you, but I'm not gonna say it. All I'm gonna say is usually that guy that saved Larry, he is on point because the people that are going against Larry, where they make the mistake is when you're dealing with someone like Larry that got money, you gotta have receipts. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Braun. This is the last thing I'm going to try to say about it. Mm-hmm. That man played a recording. The recording said he was scrambling, trying to figure out what to do about this stuff with the, the, the kid that accused him of molesting him. Oh, wow. then, he, then he played he played this clip where Larry Reed, excuse my language, viewers, it's not, it's not derog- it's derogatory, but it's not a curse word. <laughs> Larry Reed said to this man, Buddha, it was they were having some conversation. He said something like, Well, I don't know what that means because I've put my cum in, in you many of years. And I and my cum has been in you, which oh means God. you have which means you have my spirit in you. Now, how what you gonna say now, Larry? Oh, man, it's crazy. It was was it AI? <laughs> When I heard that girl, I just I just walked away. I could I didn't even I didn't even hear the whole interview. And this man this man keeps hinting. He's basically he's very well spoken. He keeps hinting, "Don't try me." He let them know, "Don't like." He's basically saying, "Don't try me," because if you think that what you've heard is something, I got a lot more. Mm. And if I was Larry and that YouTuber who is Captain Save a Ho, mm-hmm. y'all need to just take a seat. And because the man has said, I am gonna say this now, and then I'll have one interview. And he said, after that, I'm going to my regular scheduled program. And the man, and here's a, here's here's where the man made he at least made me think he had some integrity. Because Larry will. Larry will add in his show. He will try to make a, a cute coin off of you, a cash app off of you. What this man Buddha didn't do, Buddha didn't add, he didn't put up his cash app. He didn't ask you to subscribe. He said, I know that all of you people are here for the tea. And I know that most of you probably will not stay and subscribe. I know you are just here for now. And that is fine. He said, that is fine. Now he re- he really does have some. It looks like some good. I'm in that. I'm into like psychology, spiritual, um, and not that I'm giving him a sign of approval, but 
I think it's good when you think a certain way. It's I, to be a critical thinker. It is also good to hear opposing views. And I've 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 kind of always been that person, mm -hmm. like just to kind of check myself. It's always good to hear opposing views. So I kind of I went through some of his material. I I like some of it. Um, but yeah, he's right. He said most of y'all are not going to stay. So to me, this man is not in it for money, and he's not in it for clout. When you watch Larry, Larry talk, he he put that cash app out. When they're, you know, like bronze, you need I you need to put your cash app up. These people, these people on YouTube have people paying for their kids' daycare, paying for like. Uh, they're ri they'll come out and say like, "Hey, I'm putting my cash app out." They, like now they're well, doing they this only thing. Only do that if they support your channel. If they, no, but if they support your drama. They support how what you're talking about. That's when they'll do that. But if they don't. Well, do well, of course they're asking supporters. But what I'm saying is like people have no shame. That's my point. Yeah. Like they're yeah. they're they're now doing this thing called like an Amazon list. And, and people create it. I'm serious, and I think you should too. If if you if if, if people want to, I I saw this. I seen um, I won't say another YouTuber's name because I don't know if you know them and if you're okay with it. Right. But there's there's somebody that I watch their stuff here and there. They go on all the time, and they have maybe like twenty subscribers. But there's more. They have 20 subscribers, but they get like a thousand views every time somebody watches. And they just put up an Amazon list. And half of their Amazon list, people have randomly bought stuff for them. They put, nine, I need knives, I need cups. I, and, the, and the Amazon list, the Amazon list is just up for like however long you want. I'm just like, wow, people have no, they have no shame. They just have no shame. See, and then when I put my um, cash app up, they're gonna be talking about me. She has no shame. <laughs> no, but I think I think that if you if you have if you're giving content and people want to support you, but the the thing that I am embarrassed with people is when they're like, um, I gotta go pick my kids up from the daycare, so I'm putting my cash up now. Uh, it's two hours before I'm gonna call Uber. And and who and some people that that watch YouTube, y'all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And they'll they I mean, this one person, she puts her cash app for everything. She's like, I wanna um, I I want some fry, I want some fries and some hot fish, and she'll put her cash up, cash app up. Or she's like, hey, I need to pay for this stream yard. She'll put her cash app up. And she's, she's, you know, she has a lot of scandalous topics mm -hmm. and people, they, people want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. People love so, it. Like, even I, I, think, like, I get bored. I want to listen. I want to be up to date with what's going on. What's going on in the YouTube streams? So but I think you, I think you should always, I think you, Braun, should always have your cash app, cash app up because at least you're giving good information information that's searchable even if you're giving like entertainment and scandalous and mm -hmm. funny stuff at times you're still like coming on and you're you're providing content right. so i don't see anything wrong with that but you're not on here like oh i want to get a bbl so you know right. i i, I want to get you know you know my other channel i do have my cash app it's everywhere it's on the live it's oh okay the, uh, oh okay okay yeah it's I don't have a seven 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 okay. seven. <laughs> Buy me a couple That's of right. I love Starbucks, That's and right. Dunkin' Donuts, and Seven Eleven and Circle K. <laughs> That's right. I don't have a cash app, um, but I need to get one one day. Yeah, or PayPal. I just have I just have PayPal, but I don't want to do PayPal because you know you have to use your real name. Yeah, PayPal. That's that's one thing I don't like. I, I used to do that. Yeah. When, I, when you're learning YouTube and learning the stuff, like back in the days, I was using PayPal. But one time, I I, I think someone gave me they they donated money to me, and it was uh -huh. a nice lady. It was a white lady, and then somebody clicked my link and found out my real name and was like just 
saying all kinds of stuff. You know, people just do the. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I had to take my. Um, I took my taxes because I had on my link my tax company, but it had my real name, and I don't want people knocking on my door and everything because yeah, I'm already dealing with the, the stuff that I'm already dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Having people knocking at your door then the next morning. Yeah, you know, there's so much going on. Like you, you want to try to have a, mo- a peaceful life. Just because we bring this yeah. content doesn't mean you have the right to go digging and searching. But that's what I'm saying. Like some of the stuff that I'm hearing from you, like these people are, they have receipts and they can use them, these receipts at any time they decide. You better. Let, you know, let me tell you, know. you something. Let me tell you something, Bronze. This doxing stuff, this is like one time I texted you and I was like, I haven't been on YouTube. It's too toxic. Mm-hmm. This doxing stuff is getting out of hand. Like one time, even with like Jaguar. You know, I don't agree with all the stuff she does, but nobody deserves to be docked. I don't know if you saw it on YouTube, but somebody, I, w- I really was crying when I saw this because of what has happened with like the police and black black people. And they docked Jag's address somewhere like near South Dallas. And she was living with relatives. Someone docked it. They called the police in that area and said Jag was online with a pow pow. I don't want to say the word mm-hmm. and hold it. And it was absolutely not true. She was doing like she was dating um, a girl at that time and she was doing her content. It was nothing bad. And I t- I'm telling you, I'm sure the video is still out there. Cops showed up with what's what's those uh, guns, a 14 or a whatever, you know, Mm-hmm. A bunch of cops showed up, lined up, circled, circled the house with guns pointed at the windows, yelling for them to come out. Oh my God. Like, I haven't been catching up with you. That's why I was This was last year. This, this, because you keep me up to date with this. I thing. was I crying. I was crying. I was I'm crying. So and so let, I, let I, me, I, let I, me I, tell I, you. But well, let me tell you now what happened. So, she comes out and the reason why I can tell you like, you know, I don't always trust what she say, but the reason why you know she's telling the truth is because when they told, they they got out, they had their hands up and when they told them to go towards the street and the cops, they uh, ran into the house. The other, there was other cops that were standing outside with their guns still on Jag and her girl. Jag had her camera phone on and she scanned the area. And you saw these cops with these guns going into the house. And Jag said to them, she said, you're triggering me in the most. It was such a like I was I was shaking. I was shaking. She said, this is triggering me. This is triggering me. And her her girlfriend said, calm down, calm down. And she was like, why are y'all doing this? And, you know, she's already paranoid about other stuff. Mm -hmm. She was like her voice was shaking. And if you know Jag, if that girl was not there, I, I don't know if Jag would have survived. Because if you've seen other videos with Jag and the cops, they have not been, they have abused her as a woman. I, some of those videos for in That disgusts me. That disgusts me. And it turns yes. out somebody lied and called the cops. Now tell me this. Why didn't the cops say, sir, give me the video and a timestamp showing where she's doing this? Right. So well, why the cops, they didn't even do that because you know what? All they all they gather, all they probably took from that person that called it in is, okay, what's her race? Once they said black, that they were out. They pulled guns on this woman. And yes. I can't believe the YouTube community, I was crying. And I was going off in the chat. How could y'all be okay with this? Like what? Like what if that would have ended badly? This doxing stuff, it has to stop. Mm-hmm. That it and, really and, and it uh, apparently it's an elderly lady that's her relative that lives in this house. And and, and, and Jack had to leave. Person. Yeah, Jack had to leave the house. She had to leave the house, bronze. And they had to like figure out, so they ended up, I I know the area, some of the area. So I they had ended up leaving and going more north, the North Dallas area, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a more safer, let's say, area if you want to. 
But then Jag and the girl separated. This is the last thing I'm gonna tell you they did. This is how this is this is what scares me about YouTube. Mm -hmm. So Jag would do videos with her camera on. And so Jag, she was she was bragging about like she likes to stay at the Hilton property. She has an account and yada yada yada. Nobody's really believing her, but like people like to show her up. Well, well, Jag was sitting on her bed doing the sh doing her show. Somebody took a picture of the bedspread, and you know how hotel chains have like the same bedspreads, right? Mm -hmm. Girl, they had to narrow it down, and she was at a La Quinta. And they and it was in North Dallas, and they had narrowed it down to the La Quinta that she was in, and called the La Quinta, and was harassing Jag. These people took a. They, do you get what I'm saying? They yeah, did a screenshot of, of, of the type of people. Yeah, I don't know what people like because you got yeah. to have some kind of heart. You know, yeah, have humility of what people are going through. If you take the time to go sit there and do some devilish, evil things like that, you are a demonic. Yeah, you're demonic. Yeah, I know Jack can probably you know stir the pot and all that, but she's not hurting you specifically, is she? She's not hurting you. Yeah, specifically. Now, if you're yeah. in her life, you're in her life and she's harmed you, that's between you and her, you know, but people are doing this and don't even know some of the content creators. Yeah. They're, and they're, and they're adopts the people's families, they're, they're doing all yes. this. Left a, I don't know if some people come on my channel, my other channel and leave comments, but they, they'll give me kudos and then be condescending at the same time. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and like one, this guy, I don't know where he was coming from. He was giving me a compliment, but in the same time, he was like, even though some of the discre I'm trying to still trying to figure out some of the discrepancies, but kudos to you, you know, you, but I could have read it wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I'm saying, like, why would you even put that in your comment? If you're, you're not, if you're giving me a compliment, but you're giving me a compliment and you're trying to be condescending at the same time just come on now people just still be too, doing too much like if you i mean i i i i i know like i made comments on page on pages that like when i wasn't like really working full-time mm -hmm. um <laughs> it was kind of funny that's when i know i was yeah, like but it, i need but a break enjoy you probably was doing no it i wasn't i would no. know people were like <laughs> responding like one time I responded on our mom Wiggins channel and I said, Oh, it looks like you have Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? You're not talking. Can you hear me? Um, sorry about that, guys. There's some technical difficulties. Um, Miss Hart should be right back. I'm just waiting for her to respond. But yeah, so with the doxing stuff, I've seen a lot of doxing happening, especially in a lot of the sectors of YouTube. Um, I won't say the name of the sectors because, you know, everybody has the right to go see and talk and listen to whoever they want to listen to. But I try to be respectful as much as I can. Yes, I like going over to channels and listening and staying current with the current events, you know, because li listen, the, the current event sometimes is on YouTube, okay? <laughs> but the thing is, like, we're not trying to harm anyone with our commentary. Yes, we, t we talk about what's going on in the news. We talk about the things that's happening. But most of the people that we're talking about are public figures, are already on YouTube doing public stuff, speaking publicly. Um, have they have channels up with their old 
episodes that you can go back and listen to throwbacks i have them on my old other channel like you know we come on here as public speakers and we share some of our story and and that's a part some people use their story to heal i know i do um and it may not be beneficial to others but it could be beneficial to you know some so it doesn't mean to come over here or go over there and dox people. I mean, but that's something somebody else might do on another in another section. Section. I'm not trying to tell them what to do. I'm just saying, like, just think about what you're doing before you do it. Like, if people really do have real lives, people have family. You don't want to do that and cause somebody to have a heart attack or somebody to get hurt in that situation. We see what's happening with a lot of these celebrity rappers and. People are losing their lives. Some of their family members are getting hurt because of just one thing, one decision that caused a snowball effect on other people's lives. So when I when I'm on here doing our commentary, this is just talking about current events on YouTube, on reality shows, or you know what's going on on the TV, what's happening in music. We're not here trying to harm anyone. We're just sharing or re-updating ourselves on what's going on. So that's it. So you know, don't take this stuff personal. I like I don't take this stuff personal. I don't try to attack people with the information that I know. So you know, just think. About about things before you actually do it. I'm talking about to the listeners as well. You know, don't become one of those fans or um, people that get in the chat and just try to destroy someone. You got to think before you take action. That's a part of, you know, growing up and being mature. Like, yeah, you can sit and listen and have a kiki and enjoy yourself and unwind. Who doesn't want to unwind when they come home from a stressful day? And listen to what's going on in the news or just watching what's going on or listening, you know. Don't get on there trying to fight other people's battles because you may lose. So just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Just be careful. Um, so let's see. I don't know what happened to Miss Hart, but... I guess I'm just gonna end the show now. Um, a lot, there's a lot going on still left to talk about. Uh, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about it uh, at another date, or I might come in, come on during the week and talk about it. Um, but yeah, we've still got a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on with Real Housewives of Atlanta. There's um, some things uh, going on. Um, with Married to Medicine. I want to catch up so I can talk about it. I know they probably have a show or episode or something coming on tonight and I want to catch up and then come back on during the week. So anyway, guys, peace and blessings. Just be out, um, be on the lookout for some, you know, episodes to come or lives and join the live. I'll put the link in the bio. I'll put it in the bio. You guys can click it and come on or you can just call in to the show if I put the phone number out. So on that note, have a happy Sunday. Peace and blessings.